one of the early dons of the games, you know. I like hearing that. Yeah, so. one of the forefathers, <laughs> and this is nothing to do with age. Mm. Just one of the dons. Mm. Do you feel like one of the dons? I feel like an old man now, still. Really? Yeah, but in the best way possible, like an experienced young black man. You understand? Like yeah. I, I understand. I have some wisdom behind me now. Mm. How would you? Um, it might be a long story, but I want to see if you could do this kind of brief. Mm. How would you summarize your career thus far? Uh, now that's really difficult. You'd have to ask me more specific ones, and then I could, I could. If you met a stranger today and someone said, um, "Give me a brief into the musical history of Da Vinci," what would you say? I'd say I started out as a kid making songs for myself. People liked the beats a lot. I ended up spreading the beats around with the help of some really kind people in our industry, Jama, Terra, some cool people that helped me spread the word. And yeah, man, uh, I've made a career of it so far. You missed out Essentials? Essentials, there are loads of people though. Mm. Like I've missed out so many people. I feel like Essentials was definitely like um, a fundamental part of your early history though. Would it you was, say they so? were my brothers, man. Mm-hmm. Like my brothers, we traveled that journey together. Mm. Where, where 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 are they? Like, the only one that I see is like probably still active is Jenda, right? You see Jen, he's OGs now. Rem's managing Drew Blue. Mm-hmm. Um, Perempe, boss man is now Perempe. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we made a lot of mm-hmm. house together. Uh, Kido's one of my best friends. We talk all the time. Like he's, his EP is dropping soon as well. A lot of them are around, man. Do you feel like Essentials got their props? It's very hard for me to give you an accurate judgment of what was happening in them days because I was literally a kid behind the computer in the studio all the time. I never really got out to see how the music was being received and perceived. Mm -hmm. So now I only kind of know from what people tell me. Mm. Like, fam, do you know how big your tune was when I went out? That's what I get to hear. Mm. But I didn't really see it for myself at the time, you know. I was just head down making tunes. Just a lab rat. I really was, Mm. for real. Would you change that if you went back then? Yes, I would change it because I think it would give me a better understanding of uh, how, how my music connects with people. So let me ask you this. Um, please, please let me know that you had your business straight from early, though. Was uh, you registered? What aspects of it? PRS and all of that stuff. Was your nah, publishing about, sorted out? About five years ago, I registered. Only five years about ago? About that, six maybe. Was you, was you able to backdate that yeah. stuff? Yeah, of course. Yeah? Of course. You can, you can always backdate, <laughs> which is the beautiful thing about that system. So I had a nice little change coming towards me. It so, was nice. So, so, so a person of your wisdom and experience, um, there's an upcoming producer right now that's mm. in the early stages of his career. Mm. What are some of the um, fundamental things that you would tell them to sort out now from the beginning, business-wise? Uh, yeah, registering your PRS, your PPL, very important. Um, also, don't be too quick to sign it off to anyone, man. Like, try and hold on to your stuff as long as you can hold on to it because anyone who wants a piece of it, unless they're offering you a, a rose garden, proverbial rose garden, you know, then that's no use to you, man. You can just collect it yourself. Mm-hmm. I find it quite interesting today that I mentioned your name and the person was like, "Mm, yeah, I kind of know the name. And then I said to them, he produced P's and Q's and they immediately opened their eyes very wide. Do you remember when you made that beat? Yeah, man. I remember I made two versions of it. I made a version first for a rapper that was on Paper Chase called Roxy, who is uh, Alexandra the girl who was on Big Brother, same girl. Um, I made a version for her first and then I took it home changed all the sounds and made what is now P's and Q's Mm -hmm. and I remember playing it for Kane he's like that face when you get that face you know Mm -hmm. you're in what you know looking back retrospectively what do you think that done for your career a lot because people I've realized this world works on numbers you know like okay cool you're a producer what have you done that I know Mm -hmm. so if you don't have something to say then uh, you're not a real producer then Mm -hmm. you're trying to ting Mm -hmm. whether that's true or not you can be really professional working with a lot of people but if you cannot give them a number then you have no numbers to work with. Mm. So is that is that top of the list that you always bring up? Is that top three? It's one of them, definitely. Yeah. What's the mm. other tracks that you bring up for people to recognise? Again, I'm really bad at this. I kind of try and judge it on maybe what they've listened to before, what genre they listen to. I do something in the air sometimes. If they're into more like funky in-house and stuff, mm. I'll say that. Uh, something about your smile, maybe Tinchy's ones, tiny stuff. Like, there's a few for me to draw from. Mm-hmm. Riding for love is always one that people really know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there's a few. So, what brings us here today is 
the current project, man. A few Vinci people, Nachi, Vinci and Nachi, a few people are struggling to say it. Uh, I am a little bit. I kind of expected <laughs> that, you know, but that's all right with me. That's Vinci cool. Vinci project. So um, tell us about it, man. Well, the whole Vinci Nachi thing was a concept that I kind of came up with, which is kind of like me connecting to a higher source, me connecting to a higher power, me connecting to whether some people call it God, the universe, source, whatever they want to call it, consciousness, me just connecting to that. And a lot of people do that through drugs. So in the video, I did like the concept drug and the concept of a drug was Nachi. Mm -hmm. But really, all it is, is me just saying whatever gets you there. Nachi is whatever mm -hmm. connects you to your most creative, most in tune state, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. really. And that's kind of what the whole thing's about. So I feel like I'm in that space at the moment. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm being really honest musically and with everything I do and everything I say. I was really politically correct mm -hmm. for a lot of my life, mm -hmm. but that was like Da Vinci. And I feel like Nachi, the other side, mm -hmm. like um, I feel like he just keeps it real, man. Like whatever he does, if it offends people, that's their issue. That's not really mine. Mm -hmm. Well, let's keep it real and let's keep it honest. Uh, are you are you um, exploring a lot of those recreational drugs? No, I've never done a drug in my life. Oh, for real, yeah? Swear down. Oh, we are part of the same team. <laughs> yeah, man. That's what I'm saying. Teetotal and all that. Never done a drug is in it, my is life. Is there a reason for that? Uh, I don't know if there's a reason. I think there's some that I wouldn't even mind at some point in life. The right time, whenever that feels good to me, I will try it. But I haven't tried anything yet. Mm. Vinci Nachi project. Am I saying it right? Yeah, you're saying Vinci it. Bang on, bang on, bang on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get it right. Thank you. Like, was that was that the first choice of of name for the product or for the project, or was there other names that you was thinking about? Uh, name before. No, Vinci Nachi was pretty early on, you know. Yeah, when I came across the whole Fibonacci thing, it's based on the whole Fibonacci thing. So, mm -hmm. Leonardo da Vinci, Leonardo Fibonacci, mathematic genius. Check it out. It's kind of like sacred geometry. It's quite a deep thing. Mm -hmm. It's about connection to source and then all of that mm -hmm. so i kind of felt that and kind of took me somewhere so you know like are you are you are you well it's, it's obvious that you're kind of deep like that there's the spiritual element of things as well right yeah not religious though yeah, you're not religious no at all, religion right? but yeah. you're not religious then no? no there's no religion mm -hmm. i just like to understand that there's a different side of the universe there's the physical side but there also is another side mm -hmm.